Welcome back to Jax Does Homestuck. This is the second episode. My name is Jackie, also known as Jax. My uh, Tumblr handle is Socially Anxious Dragon, which is probably where you know me from. And uh, last time we left off with John finally stepping out of his bedroom, we are on page 1947. Um... And if you're typing that up in the URL, you're going to need a 001947. And, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. You exit into the hallway. On one wall hangs a picture of a fella who sure knows how to have a laugh. A man after your own heart. You always thought he looked a lot like Michael Sarah, But your dad swears on the many hollow tombs of Egypt that it is not. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall is one of your dad's stupid clowns, or harlequins, as he is quick to correct anyone who would venture such a brazen assumption. Go downstairs. The accursed odor of fresh baking wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch-nemesis, Betty Crocker, in the rich, buttery aroma of her plot stinks to high heaven. This mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. Admire Harlequins. You check out the shelves of fanciful Harlequins. Look at this fucking garbage. You hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad sure can be a real cornball. Sometimes at night you pray for burglars. Examine Fireplace. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. It doesn't matter that it's April and not terribly chilly outside. At home, a fireplace needs a fire because that's what fireplace is for. A fire belongs in a fireplace, damn it. Kadapsha gorically, at all times, without exception. As domestic myth of unaccountable origin holds, a home borrows the spirit of the flame as long as it makes a guest of it, as much moon takes the liberty with the sun's rays. The moon's an errant thief, in her pale fire she snatches from the sun, Mark Twain. You are almost certain Mark Twain said that. Toss Gamebro into fire. It doesn't burn as quickly as you hoped. Each Gamebro magazine is guaranteed to be printed on 40% recycled asbestos for big ups to Mother Earth, yo. Fondly regard, regard cremation. You examine the sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. When your father gives her portrait a wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf, a ladder, and unabridged Colonel Sassacres. He never wants to talk about it. Topple urn. You clumsily mishandle the sacred urn. Ash is everywhere. In retrospect, upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome is was a virtual certainty. You'd probably better clean it up before Dad finds it. Combine Father's Pipe with Clever Disguise. You think now would be a good time to beef up your clever disguise. Examine Oversized Gift. Champ, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. I believe in you. Contemplating what could be inside the package is sort of exciting, but it makes you a little nervous at the same time. Open Large Present. Oh, hell no. Capture log ashes. First, you prop the Harlequin doll up on the couch. Having it in the middle of the floor sprawled out all akimbo like that struck you as unseemly. You capture log the ashes to your available card. Combine ashes with urn. You merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ashes back in the urn, but it's a total mess. Really, it probably would have been tighter if you just used a broom and dustpan. Put urn back. No one will be the wiser, except maybe for people with eyes. Go get fake arms again. You just got another brilliant idea for something to do with those pointless arms. You pry them out of the cake and capture log them. Looks like Pesterchum is acting up again. Examine third and fourth walls of room. Check Pesterchum. Another one of your chums is messaging you. Check messages. T. T. I understand you have recently come into possession of the beta release of The Game of the Year as featured in respectable periodicals such as Game Bro Magazine. E.B. 
that's an ugly rumor. Whoever told you that is a filthy liar, and you should probably stop hitting on him all the time or whatever. TT. I can't control myself. I must have weakness for insufferable pricks. EB. Anyway, I still haven't checked the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to get it from him. So, BRB. TT. John? EB. What? TT. You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? You are typing to me right now while wearing something ridiculous. EB. No, why would you even think that? That's so stupid. TT. Okay. Why don't you go get the game from your father? EB. All right. Wish me luck. Oh. By the way... JK, I was wearing a funny disguise this whole time. Gotcha! <laughs> TT. I know, John. Go back downstairs. You can now execute the, that brilliant idea you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as adequate adhesive. Attach arms to doll. He 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 he. You don't care what Colonel Sassaker says. That makes it at least a million percent funnier. Inspect burnt paper on the floor. You put this back in the fire where it belongs. Throw present wrap in fire. As long as you're cleaning up. Capture log doll. You can carry hefty items, but that thing really is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. Read Colonel Sassaker's text. The Creepy Crawlies! Hell's bells, we are having a mighty sporting time of it. Hold fast, my intrepid fellow pranksmiths. We've merely nicked the mahogany of our japing chests. If I may direct the incisive ogle of your beagle pus to the wriggling regency of rubber bugs, plastic parasites, squirming serpents, pliable pests, and every such order of phyla of creepy crawly. Land sakes alive, we are cooking with petrol now. In further exhibits, we shall dwell on artifices useful to your exploits. Is your pappy's rod and reel handy? What about a bit of iron cord? It shouldn't prove elusive. Bring those writhing rascals to life and set the nerves of some old maid to the wreck of Hesperus. Do you have a bothersome aunt who never seems troubled to find ways with your sunny afternoons? A broad, splintery fence? A bucket of whitewash, perhaps? By gum, you'll fix her wagon. And what of that tawny gent who puts his lackadaisical lean near the sarsaparilla font? You'll have that listless octoroon find the spring in his step just yet. You thought about consulting the text to determine exactly how hilarious the doll is now, but this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to forget it. Find Dad and retrieve mail. The door on the left leads to the kitchen, from which the smell of baking wafts a powerful aroma which could lift an especially portly hobo off his feet. The door on the right leads to the study, where your dad spends a lot of time. He could be in either room. Where will you go? Go in the study. It doesn't look like he's in here right now. Examine father's desk. On the desk is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, the April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a stray capture log card. There's also a can of peanuts on the desk, Ha ha ho, Dad, you won't be falling for that one again any time soon. A severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. Upgrade costume with hat from hat rack. You swap the magician's hat with the bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny, but a lot more distinguished looking. Combine second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he is a rather piss-poor excuse for a roughneck, if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe, though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. How you suffer for your comedy. Examine capture log card. Yeah, this will be perfect for expanding the space in your sila. Capture log, capture log card. Arg. Play Haunting Piano Refrain. The Haunting Piano Refrain can be found on page 001977. Uh, there's nothing else on here, so just um, go ahead and listen to that if you want to listen to it. It will also be on the Homestuck album found on Bandcamp. Play 52 Pickup. You play the prankster's favorite card game, 
even though you are alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of solitaire. So stupid. Look at this mess. The peanut gallery over there sure is getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. Attempt to leave the house. You go back into the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. Exit. You exit the house. Check mail. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. You have already been scooped by your father. This page uh, also has sound. Um, it is on 001982. If you would like to listen to it while I read the following, um, that would probably be the ideal experience. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart, as if grazing the hollow of a cut reed or, say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. It is your 13th birthday, and as with all 12 preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is only the latest sleight of hand in the repertoire of an unseen riddler, one to engender a sense not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It is a mystery dispersing altogether, like the moon's faint reflection, with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones, as wind extinguishes candle and fans a fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. One hundred percent positive. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. Leave a surprise for the mailman. N no. See if your father left the mail in the car. The door is locked and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There is also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take this stuff inside. Spy in the kitchen. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. It seems your dad has been doing so much baking the glass is steamed up. God, he is so weird. But you can see what's on the table just beside the window. It looks like the mail is there. Included among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears to be suspiciously labeled with the S-Burb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. Go back into the kitchen. You have no other choice. You're going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your magic. Enter. This is page 001988. It is all sound and pictures, nothing for me to say. It's really short, but just go watch that really quick. Um, I mean, hopefully you're, you're reading along with this so you can see it. But if you're not, it's page 001988. Your dad sees right through your costume. You don't know what you were even thinking with that foolish ruse. You unequip the clever disguise. Your dad wields a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. Strife. This is an interactive sound sort of deal. Yeah, it's a little mini game in here, so you'll need to play that. It's on page 001990. Um, so just uh, play that. Retrieve the package and flee to your room. You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian is blocking your path. You will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now he brandishes yet another artifact of confection. The man is ruthless. You'd better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. Equip disguise for defense. 
The Beagle Agus absorbs the brunt of the treat. Looks like Dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit on that exchange, as is usually the case. Capture Log Pie Tin You take Pie Tin and unequip the Beagle Pus. Everything in your Silo decks is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes! This could be just the distraction you were... Nothing happens. What a huge letdown. Take the cake! When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces Colonel Sasker's text out of your silodex. Sassacre, you beautiful bastard! Now's your chance! Abscond. Now that Dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you can safely sneak away. Take PDA. You snag your Dad's PDA. Maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. Your spare capture lock card is forced out of the silo decks and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. Take Package. This red package is addressed to you. Take Envelope. You got the Esper Beta! Exit Kitchen. Get Cake on Couch. You capture log the cake on the couch, expelling the pie tin from the bottom card. Combine the cakes to make a double-decker cake. You then merge the two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your silodex is smushed between the cakes. Why don't you think these things through first? Retreat upstairs. You pause at the d juncture and head down the hall. You're going to need something to clean up the mess you were about to make by dissecting this cake. To the left is the bathroom. To the right is your dad's room. It is locked, and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. Go to the bathroom and grab a towel. You enter the bathroom. You can see your backyard from the window. The jewel in its crown is the swing set which has provided you with years of joy. There is also a spring-mounted pogo ride which has been responsible for more than one painful injury and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the rack to the side is a fresh towel. Remove PDA, envelope, and package from cake. You take the razor and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take the towel and clean off the extracted goods. Retrieve your items. The items force the manhandled cake into the toilet. And just like that, your silodex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. Go to bedroom. Admire failure to launch poster. You're not usually into chick flicks, but Matthew McConaughey's cool charisma could salvage any heap of smoldering wreckage. This is your McConaughey Wall, a casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. Now imagine she's white. You got us, Matthew. Your smooth talking exposed our latent racism. Damn, you are good. Check Pester Chum. Garden Gnostic, GG, began pestering ectobiologist EB at 1634. GG. Hi, happy birthday, John! Hello! Okay, I will talk to you later. Gardenostic ceased pestering ectobiologist at 1656. Turn Tech Godhead began pestering ectobiologist at 1640. TG. Hey, GG is looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? Did you do something to curry favor with ladies? Did you break your leg on a puppy or some shit? Dude, what are you doing? Turntech Godhead is now an idle chum. EB. I discovered a comet that is going to destroy the Earth, and it was named after me. Now I am famous, and everyone wants to talk to me a lot. TG. No, stop. Just no. Don't talk about your awful, stupid movies or make references to them. Your gross man bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to behold. E.B. McConaughey. It's spelled McConaughey. T.G. 
Sounds like a noise a horse would make, i.e. dumb. Equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you've got hanging up, E.B. Those are my dad's. T.G. I was talking about Nick Cage. E.B. Oh, what? No, man, Cage is sweet. So sweet. T.G. Haha, <laughs> so lame. You don't even like him ironically or anything. This is like for real, isn't it? <laughs> E.B. I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you for your birthday? T.G. No, those are awesome. E.B. What? No, they're stupid, which was the joke. The ironic joke. Get it? Wait. You're actually wearing them, aren't you? T.G. I'm wearing them, ironically, because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome, and vice versa. Are you taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a fucking pen. E.B. You do realize they touch Stiller's weird, sort of gaunt face at some point. T.G. Ew, yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, speaking of which, did you get the mail? E.B. Yeah. T.G. Did there happen to be a package there? E.B. Yeah, there's a big red one. T.G. You should probably open it. E.B. I would, but it's trapped under the Esper beta, so I will probably open it after I install the beta. T.G. Oh, man, the beta came. E.B. Yeah, wanna play it? T.G. Haha, <laughs> no way. E.B. Why not? T.G. It sounds so hells of boring. Just get T.T. to play it. She is all about that. E.B. Where'd she go? T.G. Her internet is blinking in and out, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Oh, and Christ in a sidecar, are you still using the stack modus? Seriously, dude, you need to bone up on your data structures. That shit is just ridiculous. E.B. Okay, I will. Open browser and go to mspaintadventures.com. You decide to space out on the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the Typhius web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. Midnight Crew. You are members of a sinister gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious plots are serpentine in their complexity. Your schemes convoluted. You are planning a heist in your underground hideout. What will you do? The new adventure is okay, but you're not sure if you like it as much as the last one. Install the Esper beta. You decide it's time for less meta and more beta. You insert the CD and install the Esper beta. Esper version 0.0.1 Skyanet Systems Incorporated. All rights reserved. Esper client is running. Waiting for server to establish connection. What the fuck is this? Bone up on data structures. You go to your closet where you keep a lot of clothes and an array of handy computer programming guides. Read data structures book. I think my rage just crapped its pants. Data structures for assholes. By Buckminster Funny Uncle. Your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Get a clue, you computer illiterate piece of shit. Free fetch modus in back. You're not sure you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring and kind of ornery. Maybe you'll just check out the free modus instead. Get free fetch modus. You turn to the back inside cover where a free fetch modus is included in a plastic sleeve. This one is dictated by the logic of Q data structure operating on a first in first out method rather than first in last out method of a stack. Apply fetch modus to Silidex. Items capture logged in your Silidex are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use the item on the bottom card and must wait for items on upper cards to be pushed back to it. For instance, the red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. This modus doesn't strike you as a significant upgrade to your previous one. In fact, it almost seems more inconvenient. You figure you might as well give it a chance, though. Switch back to stack modus. You suddenly wonder if this is even possible. You don't even remember if you had a physical card for stack modus. You find this all to be a little abstract and prefer not to think about it too much. Put down Razor. Put it down? You're not quite sure you understand. Pick up two items. 
You capture log one of the cakes. You finally found a use for all those loitering pastries. Dead weight. Get other cake. The second cake causes the razor to launch out the front of your Silodex. Oh, good lord. That beautiful face. You wish the razor would have failed to launch. Get more stuff. You open your magic chest and capture log one of your favorite books of all time, Wise Guy by Mike Cavaney. There goes the fresh towel. Might as well grab those cuffs. You take the trick handcuffs, expelling the PDA like a bullet. Oh, God damn it! Open that package! To E.B. from T.G. You examine the package. It is from one of your internet chums. It's bound in packaging tape, though. You'll need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course! The razor! It's all so simple. You wonder why you didn't... Get razor. Pick up package again. Let's take this from the top. Capture log glass shards. You take three glass shards in quick succession and duck for cover. Your Silodex rains devastation on your room from above. And now that your cards are packed with glass, you probably don't want to do that again anytime soon. You should probably go get that stuff before you forget. Use the razor on the red package. You open the package. There is something suspicious inside. Something suspiciously dirty and smelly. It's a stuffed bunny! Much like the one held hostage briefly by Malkovich's Cyrus in The Virus while taunting hard luck protagonist Cameron Poe, and strikingly similar to the one scooped up from the soot of a burning Vegas strip by Cage's Poe and offered to his daughter, a gesture symbolic of a tattered exterior surrounding a heart of gold. Poe wasn't much to look at, but he was a good man. But no, it's not merely like the bunny. According to this note of authenticity, it is the very same bunny. This is so awesome. Check status of Esper Beta. It looks like your computer is trying to get your attention. Look at monitor. Esper version 0.0.1, Skynet Systems Incorporated, all rights reserved. Esper client is running. A Esper host user is attempting to connect with you. Client has established connection with host. Press enter when ready. Check pester chum window. Tentacle therapist, TT, began pestering ectobiologist, EB, at 1708. TT, it looks like you managed to retrieve the beta. Excellent. I'm going to try to connect. EB, whoa, okay, but I just got the most awesome present. TT, the rabbit? EB, so sweet. TT, I've heard tales of this wretched creature often. Its Homeric legend is practically sconed in the fold of my personal mythology by now. E.B. Ha <laughs> ha! What? T.T. Why don't we focus on the matter at hand? E.B. Oh, the game. Okay. I don't really know how this works. What am I even looking at here? T.T. You are running the client application. I'm running the server. So I am the host user. I have established a connection with you. This is sufficient for us to play the game. E.B. Oh... Okay, then. TT, why don't we get started? Press enter. And so now we're going to stop at page 002036. That's what we're on right now. Um, it's a good place to stop because we're actually starting to get into the s The uh, main point of the game, we've got um, a lot of the pre-setup leading up to the game. And now we're going to get into the game and... Um, I think that can be the start of the next episode. Uh, it's going to be a lot of sound. I know I've been saying through here, like, hey, you should be like reading along so you can listen to all this stuff. I don't think I'm going to give that many reminders from now on. So just starting the next couple of episodes, like we're really going to start getting into a lot more sound uh, being kind of important because the soundtrack of Homestuck is the fucking best thing. So just... Uh, read along. We're going to be starting at, it was 002036 is what we just left on. So we'll be starting after that and that's going to have sound. Um, I'm going to figure out exactly how I'm going to say, hey, this is a page with sound. I'm not saying anything. Pause. And then like when you're done with this page, let's continue. So um, that is it for episode two. Thank you very much for listening. 
and um, I think I'm going to start out doing this weekly until I make sure to get a good backlog of it. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to start doing it more than once a week because there is so much goddamn content and I don't want to be doing this for 20 years. I haven't actually figured out how long it would take me to do it, but 20 years is, I don't think, much of an exaggeration. So, um, I might start doing them a bit longer. Right now, I'm kind of cutting off, like, right at 30 minutes or close to it. It really just depends on, um, how things or are going to be, like, just, just whatever good stopping points I find. Um, I didn't mention in the last, but this is obviously Homestuck is Not Mine. It's created by Andrew Hussey. It's located on MSPaintAdventures.com. I just figured that if you are listening to this, you already know all that, but I should probably mention it just to cover my own butt at least. So again, thank you for listening to this. Um, in the next episode, I should know when I'm going to do a review. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm going to wait until the end of Act 1 or do it a little bit sooner than that. Act 1 is short compared to all of the other acts, so it might not be a t- terrible idea. But again, I'll figure that out, and I'll say something uh, next episode about it. But um, yeah, I am repeating myself, but thank you again for listening. And subscribe so you can keep updated. I'm going to have it posted on my Tumblr. I might be posting it on my Twitter as well. Um, yeah, so I will see you in about a week.